This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. What's up? It's your boy, the Ben Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, The Podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill, 99.9 KISW. Your guess is as good as my kind of our categories today, delicious coffee and the bugs that we hate the most. We will play your guess as good as mine right after emails on our random question question. 206-421-ROCK. Random, random, Hello, random, Wes. Random, Welcome random, to the Men's Room. Random, random. Hola. Hola! Wes, welcome to the program. And a random question, question. Let's go with this one, Wes. Quite simply, what happened to your junk? Oh, God. Uh, which time? Um, the worst time. <laughs> the worst time. Uh, yeah, so I was doing squats one day. Oh, no. And uh, I was on my last set, and I just had too much weight up there. And I came down. And I heard a pop and just dropped all the weight. Oh um, no! Uh, yeah, it was my it was my right hip flexor. So when it bruised, it turned my boys black. Ah, I'm I, right there. Hey, then, I've seen that before. <laughs> yeah, and then well, I mean, there's always the, the locker room, but no, then like the 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 well, the shaft is the only way I can say it was like. Bruised yellow. Ugh, I'm so stupid. So man. you look like the Pittsburgh Steelers when you open mm-hmm. your pants. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. yeah. Black I, uh, and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. I broke two ribs in the uh, in the sled in the in the in the squatting sled. Jeez, just came right down on me. Her pop, pop, look. Ah! <laughs> yes. Yeah, so how good. how long did it take for your testicles and your shaft to return to normal colors? Um, it was about two weeks, and when I told my uh, ex-wife, well, wife at the time, I was like, hey, I think something happened at, at the gym today, and I showed her, she just, just, holy hell, what what did you oh, do? Yeah. And I was oh, like, yeah. and, then, and then I didn't tell the doctors for another four years, finally get an MRI and be told that, like, oh, yeah, you tore your hip labor. Ooh, God. God. Okay. Yeah. The reason we asked what happened to your junk, we asked the right guy. A high school student reported that a Kansas house member, working as a substitute teacher, manhandled him and kicked him in the testicles during class. <laughs> According to the lawmakers, he told authorities that God told him to do it. The deputy's affidavit... You shall kick him in the testicles. ...said the boy showed him a golf ball-sized road rash and a three- to four-inch scratch on his back that he said appeared after the state representative pushed him up against the classroom wall. He was charged last week with three misdemeanor, uh, misdemeanor counts of battery following his rude, insulting, or angry interaction with the two students, aged 15 and 16. The affidavit said that he acknowledged during the interview that he had, quote, demonstrated a kick... After one of the boys disrupted class, he told the deputy he did not kick the boy, and the student had embellished the heck out of it. Well, the boy told the deputy that after Samson pushed him against the wall and kicked him, his back and testicles were in pain for approximately 15 minutes. He has been banned from any property and events on any school ground for the com- for the rest of the year, but he's still, uh, he's still working in the uh, Kansas House of Delegates. So, And that's not the worst of it. There's that one story. Now listen to this one. Part of a man's penis fell off at home after a complication during surgery caused it to rot away. <sighs> the unnamed, which I think is uh, probably the right way to go about this, <laughs> 65-year-old man went to hospital 10 days after his members started to turn black. Doctors at King George's Medical University in India cut away the rotting flesh, dressed the wound, and the patient was sent home. But the gangrene began to spread again. And two weeks later, 
part of his shaft of his penis was auto amputated. No, no, that's not. I, it fell off. It fell off on its own. That is not auto amputation. Uh, the man was told he would need surgery to save the rest of his penis. Two weeks earlier, the man had an operation to remove his thyroid, a gland in the throat, after doctors had discovered a cancerous tumor. While he was unconscious on the table, doctors inserted a catheter so he could pee, but during several attempts to insert the tube, they damaged the man's urethra. Oh. So the trauma uh. triggered a condition called Fournier's gangrene, the flesh-eating bug of the genitals, and his manhood started to rot. Before doctors could perform surgery to save the man's penis, they had to check how much of his urethra had been damaged. The length outside of the man's body from the tip of the penis to the bottom of the shaft had completely disintegrated. Oh, so, God. By the time doctors operated, most of his penis had already rotted away. They were able to save the healthy part of his urethra so he can still pee normally. But his entire penis actually had to be removed. And just when you thought we were done with penis stories. No, one more. No, no. Now, the, oh, yeah, this is... Uh... A 14-year-old was cycling along the pavement one-handed while holding a drink when he smashed into a parked car. And his handlebars impaled his groin. Ah. He was taken to a hospital in a pelvic binder. And the wound was packed, according to an article published in BMJ Case Reports. When he arrived, doctors found the handlebars had sliced through his pubic area, leaving a 14-centimeter long wound across a 10-centimeter cut down his perineum. This had inverted his left scrotum and partially degloved the penis. Degloved. Meaning the skin and tissue was ripped away, exposing the muscle or the bone. He was put under general anesthesia so the wound could be washed out and the damaged tissue removed. They noted that some of the deeper layers of tissue that protect the penis and testicles had been exposed, but they were able to close the wound. So hopefully he will be okay. Do you, do you get what happened with this? Yeah. Right. Oh, by the way, real quick, all our calls just dropped off on the random God question question. So call back, 206-421-ROCK. Uh, they said, look, this is not the first time we've seen it happen. It does not happen a lot, but they said the main culprit in the case of this kid is, you know, when you have a bike, a lot of times on the handlebars, you have the plastic or rubber grips on the end. Well, there wasn't one. So when he impaled himself on the handlebars, it's like the one in a million shot. His penis actually went into, the, but you did it with such force, it's like a cheese grater, man. So it just shaved this thing. To, I, the odds of that happening are real slim, but the fact that it happened at all makes me very uncomfortable. In fact, I realize my knees are touching. I keep closing my legs. He made a skinless banger. He did, in fact, make a skinless banger. Uh, somebody here says, you guys remember when, quote, what happened to your genitals was the question of the day? I believe you guys had some hate for it from the fans. I was one of them because I'm a religious fan, but I couldn't turn you off, but also felt obligated to share the time my boys got ripped open by a fallen tree that a friend and I oh, used God. as a teeter-totter when I was about five or six, about 12 stitches. And then they had, please stop asking these questions. That's followed by stop, which is followed by please stop which is followed by, I don't like this, which is followed by, oh, Jesus Christ, we don't need to know this stuff. The one that really, really got me was when you kept saying earlier in the office, degloved. Well, because <laughs> that was like, I was like, oh, no, degloved. That, that's de-gloved? what bothered everyone. That was that, I mean, that term, that, that, that was the term that I went, golly. I mean, that's probably the nicest way to explain what happened. Mm-hmm. Degloved, because uh, VD was walking by a veggie dog, and I just held up the article. I said, just Read the headline. And his jaw just popped open. And then he said, the only comment he made was, degloved. De-gloved. I said, right, that, that's the term for it. Mm-hmm. I did not know. I'm glad I didn't know because that means it's never affected me. That is such a horrid, horrid, horrid thing to happen. Random, 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 random. Guys, random, please, no more penis random, stories. Random, Talk about happening. We're done with them. We, we did them all random, one time. So no, all your calls random, dropped because random, everyone had to random, run a puke. Random, Look, man, random, I, you're right. And we understand we're sharing these stories because these stories happen. And wouldn't you want to know? I bet you if you have a kid or if you want a bike and you're a dude mm-hmm. and you're missing one of those rubber grips on your handlebars, my money says you're already on Amazon getting replacement rubber grips so that you are never degloved. Someone else, nope, 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 can't do it. Someone else, I'll stop. Someone else, I just had to change the station, please stop. Followed by stop, stop, stop. Look, we're done. Yeah. We put them all together. It was just, it was a, it was a three-piece penis story. That's mm-hmm. what you got, right? And they got worse as we went along. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. This is not today's light favorites. I mean, I, I'm sure someone else, I can't do it anymore. No, I mean, this is terrible. 
Yeah, someone else. Steve handed me the pack of uh, stories this morning. He's like, here, yeah, you love this. <laughs> I really did. Yes, Look, yeah, that really worked out and, well. And I'll let you guys in on a little secret behind the scenes, all right? Now, the last year, basically no one's been in here because of COVID and all the rest of the stuff. But when we were at full capacity, it was, what, 100, 120 people on these floors, Probably, right? Yeah. And I print all of my stuff to the lobby yes. printer, all right? And a lot of people print their stuff and... Like for sales, it's spreadsheets or what the talking points are going to be. Other business people, it's crap I don't understand. Engineers have no idea. Mine are just news articles. And I would make it a point. VD finally called me out on this probably about two years ago. <laughs> he walks up the hall and he has a stack of stories that I'd print. And they'd been there for like two hours. I, I hadn't gone down there to pick them up yet. And they're all stuff like that. You know, your penis being degloved or whatever the hell it is. And he's like... Do you do this on purpose? I said, I absolutely mm-hmm. do. We have a printer I, in our own office. Oh, yeah, we got one. I can literally walk five feet, but I don't. I walk all the way down the hall. I'm like, you I have to leave them on the printer I, for hours. I time. leave them there because I know it makes people uncomfortable. But oddly enough, people always seem to know their mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I walked out, yeah, I think you printed these. I'm like, yes, yes, that was me. Hello, Lynn. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Lynn, welcome to the program. Random question, question. People are still mad. Ah, Why the F would you read that, Miles? Degloved penises prove there's no God. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, then let's go with this one. What uh, what memorable or cool thing or unique thing did either your grandma or your grandpa do? What do you, what a memorable thing in their lifetime? Degloved his penis. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. I think the most memorable thing I know about my grandmother, it would have to be her. It was when... She was cooking dinner in the kitchen, and my grandfather started mouthing off to her about the food that she had made, and so she just started flicking hot grease at him while he ate. Jesus! That's just, cool. I, I, yeah. That's love. It is. <laughs> Did he even care, or was he just like, yeah, it's her being her? I can't yeah. say that one. Once again, bedroom colors, here are the seven words you can't say on the radio. Sucker, mother, and please keep those words in mind when calling. Now back to the program. Mm-hmm. Good times. So they just kept mouthing off to grandma anyway. Yes. Okay. Did they stay? Did they stay married through their life? Um, they stayed married up until he died. Okay. Well, that that'll do. That, it. That's fair. That'll do it. That's a fair time to yeah. not be married anymore. Reese, we asked, what memorable thing did your grandma or grandpa do? Do you guys have anything memorable that you've heard about from your uh, grandparents or was uh, pretty cool? Uh, not really. I mean, I know on my father's side, his mom, Nell, terrifying woman. She was terrifying to me. You know, grandparents are soft and cuddly. She was not these things. She loved us. We knew that. But, like, hugging her would be like a porcupine, right? And then my mom and dad on my grandmother, uh, sorry, my grandparents on my mother's side, they were very, they were very sweet people to me. I know for a fact right. my grandfather was, but as my mother tells me stories of my grandmother, I'm like, man, oh man, I would have never known that because she was a real huggy, kissy, come here. Right. My mom's like, she, she, no, she was not. My grandfather was one of the uh, the nicest guys in the world. He was in uh, the Navy in World War II, and he was on a minesweeper. A couple of stories from him were trying to. They got there a little bit late on the Indianapolis. So that was that was some some heavy Jesus. stuff. And then at some point in time, there was either a couple small islands in the uh, South Pacific. I can't remember if it was an atoll or whatever it was, but they basically had to go. They knew they were going to blow the island up. Oh yeah, they were, they were the going to test an atomic yeah. bomb, right? So they had to go, but they had to calm the island just to make sure that there was nothing on the island that they either needed to save or whatever. They just wanted to to just walk the whole perimeter of the thing, right. and just make sure that there was nothing out there. So they did, and he brought back a coconut because that was what, you know, like everybody kind of brought back a keepsake sure. on the island. Then they pulled back about five miles and watched this thing blow up. And he was just describing, like, you know, and how big this flume was and how massive this bomb was. And then kind of like when, you know, when it all hit their boat. Right, right. And then there's waves that kind of follow in, on that as well because, you know, like it's it, – he said it was He said it was just insane. Like they, they couldn't yeah. watch it for a second. They had to turn their back. Then they could turn around. They couldn't watch the initial flash. But then they, so World War II. So these were atomic, not nuclear bombs. They were atomic right? bombs, but they were still part of the experimentation of what happens to you once you get zapped with this. So then they had to I'm go guessing through all these tests. you're not a volunteer for that. Like, hey, no. we're dropping the biggest bomb that the world's ever seen at this point. There's going to be a little radiation fallout. But if you guys go yeah. up and pull your boats up there and 
But look, the, so but, we can see what negative yeah. things happen to you. But being on a mine sweeper is exactly what it is. There's a cable that goes down to the bottom, kind of like an anchor. Mm -hmm. And these mines that have these massive, like, knobbies on them, just yeah. what you would expect to be an underground sure. kind of, they sit about 20 to 30 feet below the surface, sometimes 10 to 15 feet, depending on what kind of uh, boat they were going after. Uh, they had to go down and scuba down, and then they had to cut those lines. And then it's still a live bomb. Yeah. Then they'd have to bring those up basically on the deck of the boat. And once they collected the mine, then they would take them to one designated spot that was on an island, and they would detonate them all. So the what same causes the mines to detonate? If it, mines are contact with metal. So that's why wood, they're that's wooden boats. Okay. So mine Jesus sweepers were wooden Christ. boats, and they made the boats smaller. So they were they get pretty tore up out in you know heavy weather because it was such a small boat. But they could go into any area where there was mines and not detonate the mines because they weren't metal. So, but the, the idea of diving down and cutting the line on a bomb, a live bomb, having yeah. it drop or it, some, it would come to the surface sometime, depending on the kind of a bomb. Then they had to dispose of that stuff. So in the South Pacific, there's a ton of bombs just sitting on the floor of the ocean. <laughs> you know what I mean? That they cut. Jesus man, which is uh, which is pretty that's crazy. A Fun job. Reason we asked, what was the most memorable thing your grandpa or grandma did? Uh, we go to uh, Bell Glade, Florida. An 86-year-old sugar mill worker with 31 years on the job fatally shot his boss after he was refused another year at the mill. Damn. Palm Beach Sheriff's Office sent a news release that Felix Cabrera was jailed without bail on first-degree murder charges. He went in for a meeting with his boss, and the boss says, hey, you're 86 years old. Let's just give you a, a little bit of a compensation thing and a retirement package, and uh, you've, uh, you, you've done enough here kind of thing. That's when he came back to the office and shot and killed his boss. Wow. 86 years old. Uh, some people are checking in real quick. It says, uh, my grandmother was born and raised in Kiev, Russia. Escaped during World War II in tunnels while pregnant with my mom. Uh, they're saying the atolls, those were nuclear. Maybe the first. That's why it was so much more devastating than they thought. So, yeah, he was probably testing the nuclear okay. stuff. Because we'd already proven that the atomic bomb works, I suspect. Uh, someone else says, my grandma hit my grandpa with a wine bottle. Knocked him out. He woke up in a puddle of blood, getting arrested. And uh, someone else says, could you explain how the dump button process works? I've listened to you guys for years, called in a few times, and I know there's a delay. I've always wondered how the dump button for swearing affects time on the radio. And then someone else adds, maybe degloved should also be a word Jesus. considered a dirty word. So the delay, here's the weird thing about delay, right? So... Whatever you're hearing right now, we probably said about 40 seconds ago, Mike. Somewhere in there. So we hit the delay, and when we hit the delay, it cuts, what, seven, eight seconds of the audio. Out, wherever the five, five seconds, all right, whatever the cuss was, it gets covered. And then believe it or not, this thing is designed to such a you can't tell that our voices would at the speed up or slow down. They ramp it, they ramp it up, and then they ramp it down just to get it back to where it was. So you know that six seconds will be cut out, but believe it or not, we had so long. Yeah, but, but somehow they do it at a pace that you don't notice that suddenly our words are getting faster. Correct. It's a weird thing, man. Yeah, it is weird. I hope technology. I. Random, random, random. Hello. Or if not, we couldn't do Ted versus the FCC. Or he would just have to nail it every time. Hello, Jacob. Welcome to the men's room. Sup, bitches. Hola. A new movie title, Mike. Mark this one down. Ernest gets degloved. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob, let's go with this one. I ran a question. Question, what would you say is the worst thing about any neighbor that you've had? Oh, let me see. Uh, I'd probably have to go with uh, this neighbor who lived across the street from us as, when I was a kid. Um, and they would always complain about how close the mailboxes were. So they literally dug our mailbox up and moved it uh, about a block down. What? Yeah. Why was there a problem <laughs> where the mailboxes were located? Um, well, I think it was, I think it was more about the area and, you know, just people thinking that their ass doesn't stink, you know, and, uh, they just didn't like the look of it. So they moved your mail. That seems like that would be like some type of federal offense. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because you can't open someone else's mail. Right. So the idea of right. taking the actual box that that mail comes in and then relocating it. Would, well, another would thing, if I'm the mailman, like, hey, man, I know where the goddamn mailbox is. Why does this address not have a mailbox? Mm -hmm. Right. Or why right. did it get moved down the road? That's bizarre. Did, uh, did that cause any conflict or did you guys just kind of let it go? Well, that's the thing is, you know, we, we contacted the authorities and they came out and they wouldn't do anything about it because of how tight knit this neighborhood was. 
So they, they, yeah, they didn't take any action. They didn't file any report or anything like that because it, it is, like you said, thrill uh, a federal offense, just like stealing mail. Mm-hmm. That is insane. That is crazy. Good yeah. Lord, man. Well, the reason we asked what's the worst thing uh, about your neighbor, 53-year-old Lee Bauman of Sioux City, Iowa, talked to his neighbor on Saturday and asked him, uh, hey, could you mow my lawn for me? Now, it's not clear if this person has done it before or what, but a day later, they still hadn't mowed his grass, so he freaked out. He went to their home to see why it was taking so long. Then he stormed off and stole the registration sticker off the car for some reason, but he wasn't done there. Next, he grabbed a bunch of sticks and plywood, dumped it next to one corner of their house, and set their place on fire. Jesus. Luckily, firefighters put it out. No one was hurt, but it caused thousands of dollars in damages. When officials first talked to him, he played dumb and said uh, he noticed his neighbor's house was on fire, but didn't call 911 because it was, quote, none of his business. He eventually <laughs> copped to it and admitted to, quote, Jeez. making a mistake. Firefighters knew some sort of accelerant was used to start the fire, and when they asked him about it, he said he used gasoline that he got from a lawnmower. It's not clear if it was his neighbor's mower or his own. He's facing charges for first-degree arson and second-degree criminal mischief. Uh, by the way, public service announcement, bless you, Mike. Public service announcement from other listeners out there. They are urging everyone to not Google images of penile and scrotal degloving. Uh, More of the random question question coming up. 206-421-ROCK. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. GEICO asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners or renters coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. 99.9 KISW. The men's room is in progress. Right, a question, question, 206-421-ROCK. Uh, still getting some blowback about the whole penis degloving. And uh, and the guy mentioned that we had asked the question. I, I vaguely remember years ago, I guess, what happened to your genitalia, right? So I say this to Mike. Mike goes, yeah, we did. And apparently it was in direct response uh, to our boss who told us not to talk about genitalia. <laughs> so we decided to dedicate two hours to it. Because that's how we roll. <laughs> Hello, J.D. Welcome to the men's room. J.D., are you there? What's up? How are you? Hola. Hola. I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Oh, nice. Here we go. <laughs> hey, uh, let's go with this one on a random question question. Now, what happened with your dog? You've had a dog before, right? I have all kinds of dogs. What is the craziest story that's ever happened with one of your dogs? I have a bulldog that decided that he was a lap dog and crushed everybody in his pap. How heavy was he? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah, how big was he? He's 70 pounds. Okay, that's a big, big dog. And is a he, very compact body. Is he still around? He is. He's sitting right next to me. Okay, all right. But not on you, just yeah. next to you. Right? Yeah. Okay. You think you could outrun a bulldog? Mm, probably not. No, they're four I, I legs. Only ask. I know no. they got four legs. I, I don't know, but I, I distinctly, it's one of my favorite memories, not my brother's, but back when he delivered papers, we're kids, and it's a Sunday morning, the papers are bigger, so I've decided I'm going to get up early, I'm going to be nice, I'm going to help him stuff all the crap into the Sunday paper. And then he took like the old lady shopping cart and he would go deliver the paper. So I remember he walks out of the garage and he disappears around the corner. Maybe 20 seconds pass. And he is hauling ass, still has his papers, to his credit. So has a little basket of paper, and he's running full tilt. My brother's not a speedy guy, but as fast as I've seen him move. And I can't figure out what's going on, and he's screaming to me, close the garage door. And as he's getting closer, I realize he's being chased by a bulldog. All right? <laughs> now, the bulldog started closing. To, and again, it, obviously, they're not the fastest dog, but it started closing the distance on my brother. And I now have my finger on the button, and he basically dives into the garage, huffing and puffing. I close the door, and just as the garage touches the driveway, you hear this dog jumping. You hear its claws 
right. slide down the door, man. I don't know what it was that my brother, like every dog, wanted to kill him. And I knew that dog. I knew the people that owned the dog. Mm-hmm. So I walk out the front door of the house. The dog's fine to see me. Little nubby tail wagon. I'm petting him. And I had to hold him until my brother could escape from him again. Hey, look, some people are good with dogs. Some people are horrible with dogs. Like my grandfather was a post, uh, postman for 35 years. He got bit twice in 35 years. All right. Other than that, he I mean, any dog, dogs just gravitated to him. Even after he retired, he, go, he could go anywhere. Like, really? He could come in my neighborhood. Dogs used to always run. Sure, sure. And i get home from school. He'd be there. He's hanging out. Whatever. He'd just be on the porch, and there'd be like six dogs. Like he's holding court like he's talking to them. Like they, dogs that didn't even get along. Would just It'd be cool there. if he was there. Yeah, they just sit around and like kind of hang out. And, and so it's the exact opposite of my brother. The right. dogs that were friendly to everyone in the neighborhood, mm-hmm. they would just, and they weren't even necessarily vicious assaults. Like they would sniff him and then just bite him. Well, the reason we asked what happened uh, with your dog there, a, a memorable story. A dog walker has told how she was attacked and that her dog was lifted off the ground. Tracy Hale said she was on a walk with her little eight-month-old cockapoo, Ted, on Saturday morning. When birds suddenly set upon them, one of them lifted Ted off the ground before Tracy managed to grab him back. But she was then attacked herself, which caused her to fall over. Luckily, Ted and Tracy escaped from the vicious birds and have not returned to the park since. It was really scary. My dog was petrified and all I could think about was how to protect him. It just seemed to be in slow motion when it happened. I'm still in shock, and poor Ted was scared to walk past the park afterwards. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be avoiding that park for a while. There's a big tree in between the two fields. There was a crow on the path as we were walking by. I just assumed that this large crow would fly away. Next thing, this big crow starts squawking and attacks my dog. Then another joined in and actually lifted him off the ground and tried to fly away with him. Uh, it is a, a good job. He is a, a cockapoo uh, and not a smaller dog. I grabbed him and started to run. They started attacking me, made me fall over, and started on my dog again. Obviously, they were protecting their nest. Uh, they were just walking by. But there was an older couple that heard screaming. So they ran over to make sure they were okay. They said they'd never seen anything like that. They've never seen a crow swoop down and pick up a dog. No, man. I mean, I know crows, I kind of like crows. I know they can be a nasty bunch, but I mean, I got my neighborhood crows, and it is kind of funny. As soon as you go out with the dog, the dog always wants to chase crows. The crows know this, so I open the door, and honest to God, if it's just me walking outside, I'm going to smoke a cigarette or something. They'll do a couple of squawks. They don't care. They keep going about their business. Mm -hmm. If I walk up with the dog out of the same door, they do a squawk, and all of them just fly up to the power line and look down. And my dog kind of looks up, and we walk by, and as soon as we get to the end of the driveway, they drop They're right back, back to the street, and mm-hmm. they eat. The other thing I found out with crows, all right? So in my other house, different dog, but in the other house, our front door essentially faced an alley. But everyone on this alley, well, we face the same alley, so trash cans are there and all this. And the crows would go through everyone's trash every day, and everyone's getting pissed, and they tried different things, keep the crows out, and nothing worked. And after I got the dog, I would throw my dog poop bag uh, in my trash can, and I realized... They stopped going after my trash can because crows apparently really don't like dog poop. So at this point, every time I took the dog, threw the poop in the trash can, never a problem. But they still went through the neighbors. But there was a guy down the street where basically my dog's turds kind of became currency. Because he goes, hey, man, you know, everyone's out there cleaning their stuff up. And he said, well, they didn't get your trash can. I said, well, there's dog poop on the top of it. So they popped the lid, saw what's up there. They have no interest. So it got to the point where he's like, can you just do me a favor? Drop a solid in there. Just drop a solid in there. You take the dog out three or four times a day on one of your walks. Can you drop a poop bag in my trash can? And it seems stupid, but I'd walk like three houses down, open his trash can, throw it in there. But they stopped going after his trash can. Random, random, That's right. Poop, random, ladies random, and gentlemen. Random, Works. Random, random, Hello, Deshaun. Random, Welcome to the men's room. Random, random, Hello, Miles and Joe. Hola. Deshaun, welcome to the program. Ran a question. Question. How you doing? Good. Okay, let's see what we got from you. Okay. How did you prank or get back at someone? Or how did someone get back at you or prank you? Uh, they use cold water. To do what? Uh, um, to get me wet. Okay, well, that solves that then. Did they dump it over your head? Was it your clothes? Did they push you in a cold bathtub? What? In a pool, in a lake, in a stream, in a river. They they dumped it over my head. Okay, why did they do this? Uh, um, because uh, it, it was for 
Um, was it like the ACLS water challenge or something like that or whatever it was? No, it was. No, it was. No, it was. It was one of my. It was one of my family friends. We. It was. It was. It was one of my family friends. It was for. It was one of my family friends. It was for a party. Okay. Well, apparently, did you have a good time? Yes. Okay. Well, as long as it didn't bother you too much, you know. I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's, I wouldn't be hanging out with that friend group, but uh, it's just. I mean, it depends how much water it is, right? Uh, you're going to like this one. See, this involves one of your favorite bands of all time. Are you lying? No. Because every time you say that, the first thought of my mind is poison. Who's no, the exact it's dead serious. It's really one of your favorite bands of all time. You've all always right. been the biggest uh, Faith No More fan that I know. Absolutely. freaking lutely Okay. Yeah. You know the lead singer's name is Mike Patton. I do know this, yes. Okay. And this is uh, a story back from 1992. And actually, this is one of those stories where uh, that uh, I was at this tour back then. Mm -hmm. It was Guns N' Roses. It was Metallica and Faith No More. I remember up. that tour, man. Uh, and it, there was another leg at one point in time where I want to say Living Color uh, might have opened up as well. Damn. But, but Faith No More was the was the opener where I saw them in Three River Stadium in uh, in Pittsburgh. But that was quite a show. And uh, Metallica and Guns N' Roses, they alternated headlining nights. Right. So certain times during the show, I think the show that we watched, Metallica actually played during the day. And then Guns N' Roses, after a, a brief wait... <laughs> Played uh, played the, the the latter half uh, of the concert, but either way, uh, Mike Patton in a new uh, in a new interview, he said he peed on Axl Rose's teleprompter <laughs> when they opened for Guns N' Roses and Metallica. Mike said, "Quote: It was such a drag touring with Guns N' Roses. I hate to say it, they treated us like s." Mike said he and his bandmates were looking for something messed up to do every day. Once he took a chocolate cake from the backstage catering table, again a chocolate cake, and he put his own poop inside. <laughs> <laughs> Mike said, quote, and then we watched because I was hoping like, oh, maybe Axl Rose will eat it. Unfortunately, a crew member picked it up, so Mike had to run over and grab the thing before he could eat it. Looking back, he blames youth stupidity for his disgusting annex. But uh, overall, that's what, uh, I think that's a great story. Jesus, man. <laughs> Pooping in somebody's chocolate cake? God. I mean, you ruined the chocolate cake. for No one just eats a whole chocolate cake. It's going to be consumed by a large number of people. But obviously, it's probably slated for Axel. Yeah. For whatever random, reason. Random, random, it's anyone random, having a good time. Random, I guess not. Random, I random, I've never random, thought of that movie. Random, random, Hello, Charlie. Random, Welcome to the men's room. Random, random. Liquor and whores. Liquor and whores. All right, Charlie, let's go back to your youth on this random question question. Back in the day, was there anything that you were not allowed to wear, watch, or do? I mean, lots of things. Biggest one was not allowed to watch Simpsons when I was a kid. Simpsons. That's so funny. Yeah. I remember a lot of kids had that problem, and now they're just part of pop culture. So yeah, and by extension, I wasn't allowed to buy Butterfingers either because... Remember back in the day, better not lay a finger on my butterfinger. Yeah. Well, so wait a minute. Your parents were so offended by the Simpsons, you couldn't even eat a butterfinger. What if it were like Halloween? All right, so you didn't buy it. Somebody gave it to you. If they saw you with the butterfinger, did they still kind of forbid you to eat it? Yep. Just take it wow. right out of my hands. Do you know? Do you know the reason they hated the show so much? My mother uh, did not like Bart Simpson because she thought he was disrespectful to authority and disrespectful to her parents and everything else like that. You mean a child? Yeah. I wasn't allowed to watch Speed Racer when I was a kid just based on, what? Based on violence. What was the violence I don't Speed know. Racer? I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to buy Kiss albums either. Really? Oh, there was all kinds of stupid crap going on in my house. My parents did not care at all. I'm not saying I turned out well, but they did not no. care. This at saved my all. life, Steve. Could you think? Could you imagine what would happen if I bought Destroyer when I wanted to? <laughs> can you can you think of all the hell that would have broken loose? My parents got me. They bought me my first couple of Kiss albums. I remember one Christmas, one of the albums. All I ever wanted was just music, but one of the albums they bought me was Blizzard of Oz. From Ozzy Osbourne, where he's on the cover, like slamming across it to the ground. They were like, "We don't care. Mm -hmm. It's your me." My father's whole deal was, "If I don't have to hear it, I don't care what you listen to." And the other album they bought for Christmas was uh, "Screaming for Vengeance" from Judas right. Priest. Now, dad's for these by name. My dad's like, 
That's a cool name. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what. The other thing, I had to hide Cheech and Chong albums. I had to hide my Richard Pryor albums from them. So they, could, they didn't really know Richard Pryor's stand-up so much. They just knew him as Richard Pryor. Mm-hmm. So they did not know what I was listening to with my headphones on in the record player. Sure, sure. And no idea. So that the one that really pissed me off more than anything was I bought uh, the Doobie Brothers Minute by Minute. All right. And uh, if you open up the Minute by Minute album on the inside with the Doobie Brothers, they had just a huge joint. It was on the album sleeve. They are called the Doobie Brothers. The Doobie Brothers. Right. It's in the name. So the first thing that I knew that I needed to do was I needed to get rid of that inside sleeve. So I took it and hit it in the Cheech and Chong album where I thought, you know what I mean? Like, (laughs) if anything would make sense. Right, right, right. I mean, this is like, what a fool believes. It's not like this is like talking about smoking weed. The name of the band is the Doobie Brothers. Right. I mean, come on, man. So that doesn't take a lot. Yeah. The only thing my parents cared about was TNA, right? With movies and stuff like that. That was it. Just, you know, they don't want me to... And I'm not talking like porkies. I mean, if it showed up at all, and then the first time I actually saw boobs in a movie, and it was completely pointless, a horrible movie called The Howling, and I'm watching it with full-on family, including uncles, aunts, cousins, and in their mind, this is a horror movie. It wasn't particularly scary. Anyway, at one point, this couple starts having sex on a sofa by the fire. Right? It's already, this is getting weird, because I know my parents have an issue with this or whatever. But then the people turned into werewolves while they're having sex. And it was just a bizarre Like moment. an American werewolf in London kind of thing? Yeah, but it wasn't supposed to be funny like that. When it, was, it was supposed to be scary. But anyway, they turned into werewolves uh, while they're having sex. And I remember it was a little awkward and there was some silence there. You know, I'm trying to hide my erection and all that. But my uncle looks over at me and goes, Stephen, when that happens, that means it was good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there was this movie, man, did get, I, the, the, one time that I, the one time that I got grounded was I was talking to my friend on the phone. And my mom picked up the phone because she was going to call one of her friends. I did not hear her pick up the other phone in the room, so Uh-oh. I did not realize that she was listening in on my conversation. And I was telling my buddy about this movie I saw, Death Race 2000. I want to say that that movie had Sylvester Stallone. It did. Yes, it did. Either way, the premise of the movie was, during the course of the race, when you ran over someone, you got points. Mm-hmm. So this is like, think like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, campy type of flick, right? Yes. There's not a lot of seriousness that goes into this. There was like unnecessary blood and things like that, but it was very much over the top. It was just one of those movies. But you got more points uh, for who you hit uh, based on situations. Like elderly, wheelchair. Right. If you hit someone right. in a wheelchair, it's big points. Like, so like people were, uh, during this race, they were, they were pulling through hospital, you know, <laughs> right. like emergency room, like, you know, areas where people were dropped off and <laughs> killing people. But the thing was, it was like points were going up as they were doing it. It was it, it was a campy. stupid movie. You knew but, it wasn't yeah. real, but I got grounded for like two oh, weeks. Oh, no. Because my mom then made it a point to go watch this movie to find out what it exactly I'd learned. And I don't know if you can really deduct anything from that. You know what I mean? As a 12-year-old kid or whatever, but either way. Uh, the reason why I asked, what were you uh, not allowed to wear or uh, watch or do? Uh, As uh, the pandemic grinds on in North Korea, uh, they remain uh, essentially closed. Kim Jong-un is now cracking down harder on the youth culture. Told you a couple weeks ago about some of the recent laws. Well, now there's more. A law passed this winter called the Law on the Elimination of Reactionary Thought and Culture carries penalties from five years in prison to death. And being on the wrong side of the law can be as simple as wearing tight pants. Uh, The Socialist Patriotic Youth League functions as sort of a grim fashion police, and they are out there preventing people from wearing skinny jeans, having piercings, or any kind of trendy uh, hairstyles at all. Uh, Because he would know. By the way, if you uh, have a USB stick and you uh, watch a show from another country, yeah, you could be sent to a labor camp. Uh, Smuggling them can mean death. Uh, As far as South Korean TV shows, uh, they are basically showing all of these arrests and keeping people up to date. That Look, if you do any one of these things, it's a minimal of five years in prison. Minimum. Minimum. By the way. Five years in prison. My mother, who apparently is listening to the show, she texts me. (laughs) She says your parents didn't care. Mom, listen to me. A movie came out with Farrah Fawcett, I believe it was called Saturn 3, Saturn 5. In my mind, sci-fi. That's that's all I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. They went to see the movie, and I guess Farrah Fawcett's boobs and her opulent nipples show up uh, on the screen. So, and, and I remember my mother saying, look, me and your father went to see it. It's just, we, we can't take you to that movie. And she kind of vaguely explained why. You know, Farrah Fawcett, who was all the because her boobs are there. And then you went to see the movie Alien, and there is zero TNA in that movie. It is the most terrifying experience. Like, at 10 yeah. years old, things blowing out of people's stomach, and then a creature I couldn't see systematically kill pretty much everyone on a spaceship. Sure. 
That look, was messed but, but, up, but man. Spa- but space space movies then really didn't have a lot of action in them. They didn't have a lot of violence in it was them. Like two thousand, like a space, space oddity. Space that, that was just an odyssey. You're yeah, thinking David Bowie? Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. That, that was a, that was a kind of a boring flick. Uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I was allowed to watch, and I was thinking this is going to be great. It wasn't. It sucked. It was terrible. The first Star Trek movie that came out, <sighs> although it was rated G, I was allowed to watch that one. I was not allowed to watch the next one that came around. The Wrath of Khan. The Wrath of Khan. That was the good one. I know, and I wasn't allowed to watch that one. Oh, because... my mother took me to all those movies. She was yeah, a Star see, Trek fan, so to... she's yeah. like, "Come on!" Right, exactly. The only thing I was allowed to watch space wise was Battlestar Galactica, <laughs> which was a crappy show on television. <laughs> so I finally talked him into letting me see Star Wars. It's just absolutely the worst. All right, still to come, your guess is as good as mine. The category is delicious coffee and the bugs that we hate the most. You are listening to The Men's Room. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org.